Now there is uh, another MCQ that is uh, repeating again and again. There is a confusion regarding mouth deviation in facial nerve palsy. First thing we should know about which side, which facial nerve is paralyzed. So normally the mouth is in the center because the, 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 the one side effect is uh, neutralized by the other side effect. So when there is paralysis of one nerve, so we cannot push back that side. So what happened? The healthy side pulls that side back and there is deviation. So which side is paralyzed? That is opposite to the mouth deviation. That is very important. Which side of the of the of the of the facial nerve is paralyzed? Opposite to the side of deviation because the mouth is deviated to the healthy side. In the opposite side, it cannot push the the, the, the end of the mouth back. So the, the mouth is deviated to the left, right facial nerve palsy. Mouth is deviated to the right, left facial nerve is paralyzed. Now the, the, the other thing we should know about is it is upper motor it is upper neuron or it is lower motor neuron regarding facial neuropalsy if there is involvement of the eye facial neuropalsy with involvement of the eye or patient is having loss of their wrinkling if the whole face is involved but they will not tell you they will not even give you a clue that the whole face is involved they will only talk about the mouth deviation but for general purpose you must know if, if with mouth deviation there is eye involvement so you come from the cerebral cortex towards the pontine pontine region in the pons so there is mcq regarding that person is having weakness of the left side of the body with mouth deviation to the left side now <clears throat> what is meant by contralateral and ipsilateral now we are confusing this weakness of the left side of the body with mouth deviation to the left we think that this is epsilateral but that association should be taken between the facial narrow to the weakness of the body not weakness of not uh, mouth deviation mouth is deviated toward the healthy side so what we do we confuse this thing person is having weakness of the left side of the body mouth deviation to the left so we think this is epsilateral and we commit mistake we pick internal capsule we pick MCA, we pick corticospinal tract. While the thing is, weakness of the body should be associated with the facial neuroparalysis. So if a person is having mouth deviation to the left side, that means his right facial nerve is paralyzed. And if his right nerve facial is paralyzed, and the weakness of the left side of the body, so weakness of the left side of the body, and facial neuroparalysis on the right side, so these two are contralateral. That is not epsilateral. These two are contralateral. And if there is contralateral representation, you already know that that is pontine stroke. Another MCQ is patient is having weakness of the left side of the body with mouth deviation to the right side opposite to that. Now his mouth is deviated to the right side and he is having weakness on the left side. The mouth is divided to the right because his left facial nerve is paralyzed. So left facial nerve par paralyzed with weakness of the body. These are epsilateral. So the, the, the lesion is in the internal capsule. Now they can, they can actually change the, the stem. Instead of internal capsule, they can ask about the MCA stroke. This is the, the, the typical presentation of the MCA stroke. Or they can, they can, they can give you the option of the cortex. Cortex corticospinal tract, internal capsule, these all are the answer to, 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 to this thing. <clears throat> but this must be memorized that we are taking association between weakness of the body with facial neuropalsy. Now if, if there is contralateral representation, weakness of the left side of the body with facial neuroparalysis on the right side. They are actually not giving you further details that he is having actually the, 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 the paralysis of the whole face because this is pontine stroke. And how would you differentiate between it is central stroke or peripheral stroke? We are further digging that contralateral presentation. Now, if a patient is having six narrow palsy also, that is horizontal gaze palsy. 
he his evolution neuro is work is not working so he is having problem in the brain stem but already they have uh, given you the clue of weakness so already you are having pontine stroke so regarding facial neuro paralysis i will make another video uh, in which we will differentiate between the central neuro paralysis and the peripheral neuro paralysis but the idea behind that is if they if they are giving you the clue of the of the sixth neuro palsy or if they are giving you the clue of weakness of the body then it is central neuro paralysis but if there is the whole facial neuro involvement without weakness no, and, and the whole body and the whole face is involved this is mean this is peripheral stroke i will make another video on that thank you for watching